<laughs> okay, hi. So um, I'm lucky enough today to be joined by Sally Norton, who is Managing Director of Bray Healthcare. And um, I'm trying to think when we actually met Sally was it last was it was last year I think at some point wasn't it yeah, just before Christmas I think yeah and um, then the thing that really struck me about you is that you were quite new into the company but you were um, quite different to most leaders in that you were so you said that the company's really great and every you know people are in a good place and doing great things but you just wanted to make sure it was the best it could be which really is not something I hear that much of. In theory, in all the textbooks, it's all there, but in terms of actually a real leader saying that face to face, I was like, breath of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to chat with you today because when we sort of touched base last week, just to see how um, things are going with your company, actually, I was so impressed with what you've been doing in your whole approach to managing your team through what's been happening um, around, uh, well, through the lockdown and, and beyond, that I thought it'd be useful to share with other companies because I'm sure some of what you talked about, there's really valuable learning from that. Um, so I wondered in terms of your role, I mean, obviously you're the MD, but um, in terms of what that has looked like for you and um, Bray Healthcare, what's, what's, what has your role been in terms of actually being able to lead your your team, your company through this whole this whole process, this whole time? Yeah, it's it, it's certainly been different. Um, I, I was after our conversation, I, I I looked back at our timelines of of what we'd done when, um, because it, it felt as if we were slightly ahead of the game because we were just watching what was going on and, and using some common sense mm. and. And our first activities really that 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 saw a, a change in approach here at Bray were, were as far back as early March, first week in March. So about the 9th of March, mm. we were already starting to introduce introduce measures. Um, I think what's interesting is retrospectively, what I've realized I did is something that I've since read in an article you should do, although I, I didn't do it because of that, but I've matched it since, and that was made our response as a business to COVID and our treatment of our employees, my, my day job. Yes. So instead of being a managing director of a company day by day for probably four or five weeks, responding to COVID became my day job. And mm. I didn't realize it at the time, but I've recently read an article about that being the way to deal with um, a crisis, I guess. Mm. Uh, so a lot of my time was suddenly spent reading, following, watching the updates when they started to happen, watching the statistics, the figures, um, and trying to make sense of, of what we needed to do to keep our employees safe here. Yeah, and I think that's a real shift in role, isn't it? Rather than it being kind of just a bolt on, trying to keep my employees safe. And I guess that safe is about physically safe, but also feeling kind of emotionally, psychologically safe. That's quite a shift for a lot yeah. of people possibly even more so psychologically yeah physical safety is quite easy because you you can see it you, yes. you're not well or they're not well but yeah. we all know that mental health is is much much more difficult to see mm. um, so so in some ways that that was one of the more important things but suddenly it wasn't about have we hit the sales figures what's the profit looking like mm. uh, all, all of that kind of dropped away for a few weeks in yeah, order yeah. to make sure that we could keep well keep the business running certainly but look after the employees make sure everyone was okay and coping with with a really challenging situation and i think that's, <laughs> that shift in your in how you approach that is what's probably contributed massively to your successful outcomes because rather than just focusing on the figures and just focusing on how to try and drive sales through a really, really tricky time, you put the people first and you kind of change everything on its head and, you know, moved business away from what people normally focus on and said, actually, let's look at the people within our organisation because if they're okay, then the, the, the numbers are going to work out. And I think that's what kind of really stands out. Yeah, and, that was, that's, and that's absolutely right. Um, 
I, I, I believe that it, that it's all about the people in any event, even without this unusual situation to be dealing with. If you look after the people and then they look mm. after everything else in the business and, and it does well, but, but even more so in this situation because yeah. people were, people were scared. Yeah. Um, for sure. Uh, and uncertain both about the moment and about the future. Mm. So what did you do? Um, are you able to kind of pinpoint what you did that helped people feel safe, psychologically safe, emotionally safe, so to be able to come to work? Yeah, uh, lots of communication. Um, I, I like communication anyway, but we, we definitely upped that. Mm. Um, so as early as the, the first couple of weeks in, in March, we were... We were go I was going around, my, my other team, senior team members were going around talking to staff um, just casually about what was going on. We, we changed our notice boards. We were putting big chunks of information with highlighted sections up on notice board. What, if you, what are the symptoms? What if you get them? What if somebody else gets them? All of the guidance as it was coming out, mm. we were putting up, but we, we were signposting people to the information they needed. Yeah. And then yeah. we were reacting to to their reaction so for example when we talked about the symptoms one member of staff stopped me in the corridor and said I'm not sure whether I'd know if I had a temperature so I then went on the internet and bought a hands-free digital thermometer which we managed to get in before there was the big rush on yeah. <laughs> um, and said to the staff if you would like to take your temperature you don't have to but if you would like to we have a device and, and you can check it and and we had a hundred percent Mm -hmm. adoption of every single day and this was well well before the lockdown in in mm -hmm. early march every single day people all the staff were coming in and checking their temperatures and and then the staff were saying to me i feel safe here because i know everybody here has checked themselves i know that we've we'd already introduced social distancing about a week before the the official um mm -hmm. request and, and the lockdown on the on the 24th um, and, and staff were saying that they felt safe. So we knew that the things that we were doing were, were working. And I think there's a difference in there but because you sort of, you introduced a lot of those um, measures or a lot of those kind of support mechanisms before it was officially announced that these are good measures to take. I think it really showed your staff that you had their best interests in heart. So you were doing all this because you thought it would make sense. And you thought it's what they would value and actually would show that you were, you cared a lot about them rather than you were doing it because you were being told by someone else to do it and therefore you're just following the guidelines. Absolutely. And that, and that in turn builds trust, of course. Yeah. But I think by doing that, we, we found ourselves in a much better place as, as a business. So you're right. We, we, we were doing the things that felt right. We were watching what was, I was watching what was happening in other countries. Um, and, and you could see the way things were going and how, how globally everybody was dealing with, with the pandemic. So we were introducing those measures as we felt that we needed to in order to keep everybody safe. Mm. Uh, and because of that, we got ahead. So we had extra PPE early. We didn't need it a lot but we had it we bought extra sanitizing stations into the, into the business um we purchased masks for everybody and and a lot of the problems that that came later when i guess directives were given from the government was everybody rushed to do the same thing at the same time and yeah. again because of that the staff kept kept saying to me they felt safe but they also felt that coming to work created a sense of normality for them yes felt organized and it felt well run um and they were i didn't have any or very few issues i had one or one or two people that were so once we got to the 24th or that the boris speech on the 23rd one or two people in the following days that were not a hundred percent sure whether it was right for them to be here and we mm -hmm. had to deal with them um on a one-to-one -one basis but what i was happy about was that those employees came and talked about not feeling happy that message yeah. came up into my office and and we were able to talk talk them through that yeah. through that and to give them options as to what they could do yeah uh, and I think that says a lot about the fact that they are 
happy to come and talk that through with you. And also, I remember you saying last week um, that you weren't telling them what they needed to do in terms of if they fell into certain categories, you were asking them what they wanted to do, which I think is a huge mm -hmm. difference as well. Yes, and that became apparent with, with the shielding and some of the age restrictions that were being kind of mentioned. I, I had an employee in particular that was um, of an age category that perhaps was being advised to stay home and, and she came and almost begged me said please please you won't make me you won't make me go home and not not let you won't not let me work mm -hmm. um and I kept saying to everybody you you have to make your own dis decisions you have to do what what is right and and, and safe mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple of people that were shielded and one of them was reluctant um to shield and and again I had a quite an emotional hour with her in my office talking through why it might be a good thing to do and what her concerns about it were and, and actually at the end of that she did go off and and has been shielding for the for the whole time mm. so it was nice to be able to support the staff in 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 making their own decisions rather than putting them onto them yeah and I think that's the whole thing that strikes me is that how active you all are so you as a leadership team and all the employees in terms of taking responsibility for thinking what is right for me and what is right for our colleagues and um, you know this organization rather than other people who um, have not fared so well um, for all sorts of different reasons but I know some people have just been waiting to be told they wait they're saying we're waiting for the next bit of guidance where it's this constant waiting game this and it takes almost quite a passive approach which is not normally how you would run a business normally you're having to think about what you're doing and how how you get there and you know what might get in the way and how you overcome those those hurdles and it's really interesting how some people's minds shift uh, mindset shifted whereas i think you held on to that quite active approach and you really it sounds like you really kind of empowered your employees to be active and taking responsibility for themselves yeah that that's that's absolutely what we were trying to do yeah and as as guidelines came out i would then cross reference them to make sure that what we were doing complied yes so we weren't ignoring the guidelines but we, we were checking ourselves against them but i i can't think of any situation any advice that came out that we hadn't already implemented ahead of it mm. um and again i think that that helped the staff to think their way through the pandemic i think yeah. to your point a lot of people have become very passive and and frightened by it um and i think by giving our staff the information and highlighting and signposting to the relevant sections of it mm. and then talking to them and talking through their concerns as they arose they they felt fairly in control of the situation yeah. and also you're leading by example aren't you because that you're everything you know you've talked about now but also i know you were um when you were furloughing people you're making sure it was across the board when you were, people were taking pay cuts that was across the board i mean you integrated that with yourself and um you know it's very much about you know we're not i'm not telling you what you need to be doing but this is all of us in this together yeah um so so we we continued to run the business throughout that was a a really difficult 24 48 hours I'm, I'm talking now about the 24th 25th of March when a lot of businesses closed down and, and I had to make a decision about whether we were okay to carry on working we're in healthcare but I never classed us as, as key um, yeah. and that key worker um, essential work uh, terminology was was really unhelpful at the time mm -hmm. but I became comfortable that because we have a production facility here, we couldn't, those staff, those production staff could not do their job from home and yeah. therefore could come to work. Mm. What we did with the office staff is we started to rotate. So we, we, we introduced home working, which was a new thing for us here at Bray. But I also didn't want to empty the office because that didn't feel supportive to the people in the production team who had to be here. Yeah. So we put lots of social distancing and we just did a, a minimal support staff at, at the office and, and myself included. So I'd perhaps be here three days a week and work from home a couple of days a week. The, initially, we actually had quite a lot of activity. We had a lot of orders already in our book and we pushed forward to, to um, manufacture. And when we became of the f aware of the furlough, 
we tried to be quite strategic so we kept all of our staff on we didn't furlough immediately we made all of the product that we had orders through for and got that shipped mm. and then the next difficult decision was when it became apparent from our modeling that we were going to see a dip in activity and demand and therefore we started looking at the furlough option and I I was really fearful that 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 would undermine the trust that we built up with the staff. Mm. Um, so we pulled everybody together at the same time. We stood in the warehouse, which was the only place we could get everybody spread out. Um, and we're just really honest with the staff, talked about what was happening with demand, um, reassured them as to where we were as a, as a business and why we were going to start to furlough some stuff. And as, as, as you point out, Lisa, we did it across the board. So one of the directors was furloughed. The other directors took a pay um, cut to, to, mm. to try and put some leveling in place. Mm. Um, and actually I was overwhelmed by the positive response that the staff showed then and have continued to show um, mm. since then. So how does everything you've been doing through this last four months or so differ from good leadership in kind of I say normal times whatever normal means now but how does that differ Have, does it differ I don't think it differs a lot mm. um, the balance of my workload has been different or it certainly was in those early weeks although it it then shifted back to the day job with with yeah. with the, the the covid response being more of a part time role than it was initially um but but i i think my my approach followed what what i try to make my approach anyway what what i've learned over the years mm. around good communication honesty telling the staff as giving the staff as much information as is possible about the business and, and how we're doing and where we're going mm. um and, and keeping everything level, you know, that not having a hierarchy, flattening the structure down so that everybody feels comfortable and able to talk. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's important. What, whatever the, the external environment is, is, is sort of. So is there any particular advice that you would give to leaders in companies where they're not faring so well in terms of trying to help them think about, um, you know, what to focus on first and foremost to help them get, you know, some movement in terms of people being on board and having that trust and feeling secure and, and so on, being able to engage. Focus on the people. Yeah. Really, I'm, gosh, it's hard, isn't it? If, if your business is struggling right now and, and, and the orders aren't coming in or the demand isn't there, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to focus just on that. Mm. But actually it may be that the people have the, the team have the solutions, mm. <laughs> um, you know, talk to the team, share the concerns, um, maintain control. You've, uh, as the MD, you've got to main, maintain control and they've got to feel that, that you're, you know, holding things together. But I think mm. actually making staff aware of what's going on and seeing if they have ideas or, or, or thoughts and focusing and investing in those people um, and communication. Uh, I, I know a few people who've been furloughed and have not had a single conversation with anybody from their business in, in months. Yeah. Um, which, which is, is always, which is staggering, isn't it? And actually we know that, you know, communication and feedback and so on is kind of, you know, a, a two of the key aspects along with sort of clarity as much as you can have clarity and actually saying, I don't have clarity right now. I don't know what's happening is, is providing some information, but that's really important for, for engagement um, mm -hmm. of, of people and I guess some people I know from having had conversations don't feel confident about having those conversations. They're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Or what if this, you know, what if people say this, that or the other? Or, you know, they suddenly, they, people feel quite nervous about anything to do with well-being, mental health, kind of how anything to do with people's feelings, essentially. And a lot of dealing with people's worries um, you know about the whole COVID situation and you said you've had an emotional hour with a member of staff and so on it's about emotional stuff that, come, that goes with people so how do you what would you say to those people who are quite anxious about I, think, I think it's really important not to underestimate your team mm. so when I was nervous about having the, the initial furlough conversation I think I was underestimating my team I 
you you just have to be honest so if if people aren't they're not daft um if people are sat at home waiting for that call that tells them that they're going to be made redundant and they they pretty much think and know that's going to happen well how much better to have a conversation with them to say yes it might yes um, and and when staff have asked me you know i have always said i don't know i don't know what's going to happen i don't know when demand is coming back but we've done lots of modeling and at the moment we're ahead of the model and everything's fine and we long t i've been able to give assurance for long term because mm -hmm. of our situation but i've tried to be really honest and and not underestimate them Pe people know what's going on yes um, yeah and i always think it's really interesting yeah, some people try to hide it. Isn't it? It's worse not knowing. Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't know, your imagination completely yeah. takes over and it imagines the worst case scenario. And I think that whole ability for you to be like just very transparent and, you know, very authentic in terms of actually I don't know and not try to be this kind of superhuman um, managing director who's got everything in control because actually that's not the reality is it so what's what's the future look like for your company then I mean has it has this shifted what your future looks like or are you do you just pick up where you left off or, or quite what what's happening now it, it's it, it's definitely shifted I think um you, you mentioned it at, at the front end I, I only joined the, the business back in November and, and had lots of plans to to gently take the business through some changes which actually will have fast tracked because yeah. of it. things like home working which which was not something we did at Bray this has demonstrated to individuals in the company that 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 can be good and that mm. and the work um, and home working isn't really a day off um, yeah. at all um, it's made us look much more carefully at our processes so we've had to change our processes to keep our staff safe and distanced um, and that has had a knock-on effect to make us look at our planning in a different way. Mm. Um, and we've learnt a lot. Uh, it's forced us to do things slightly out of our comfort zone, and that's been good for the business and something that we'll continue to, to do to continue to challenge ourselves. Mm. Um, you know, I, I appreciate because we're in healthcare, we're, we're in a good position. It, it, our demand is always going to bounce back. So, so we're very fortunate in, in that regard, but we will take a lot of lessons from this for, for yeah. sure. So final question, is there anything else that you would kind of share as, a, as insight into either what's happened over the um, sort of last four months or just from what you're, you're the position you're in now in terms of, leading a team and doing doing it successfully is there anything else that you think would be useful to share so, so the only other thing that i think I, I i did which turned out to be valuable was i i bounced my thought process off my colleagues so so i have a a, a small team of three other senior members um who, who report directly to me but but i would be thinking about things and I would go home and I would sleep on things and I would come back with ideas and and always pull that team together mm. and talk to them about what I was feeling and thinking and get their thoughts and feelings as well mm. so I think from a stress point of view that really helped me um yeah. it, it's been hard it was hard it's I'm fine now but it met thinking back there were a few weeks when I, I, I just felt exhausted because you your mind's running yeah. 10 to the dozen. I, I wasn't sleeping. Um, it, it was difficult um, trying to make the right decisions, but using the team and not being afraid to say to them, I'm not sure. I, mm. I, is this right? Am I going mad? Have I done the right thing? And, and showing that little bit of vulnerability within my senior team um, really, really helped. And it helped me to make good decision making and it, it helped them to have a voice and it has brought our team together. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a brilliant place to end because I think that vulnerability, that sense of building trust, um, I think is something that a lot of people struggle with still. And they assume that they should have all the answers. They're either a manager or a leader and therefore they should know what they're, they're doing. And actually this is um, very new territory for a lot of people. I think you were 
already well set up as a leader I think your whole everything about your values and the way you approach leadership is inspiring and I think um, pre-covid uh, a lot of people would be able to learn from you but I think throughout it your your openness and your honesty with those people around you has um, has really contributed to to your success so thank you so much Sally for sharing that I'm really really grateful um, and I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it will it will be helpful for some other companies where they're still feeling a bit stuck on things and I know there are lots of people in a professional capacity saying this is what you need to do but actually to hear it from someone who is living and breathing it and is seeing the success of it um, I think makes a real difference so thank you very much Sally. My pleasure.